In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful Parallax WordPress website. Hey guys, it's Hogan here and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to create this amazing and beautiful parallax website using WordPress. So WordPress is the most popular way to create a website and it allows anyone to create a website without any coding. So it's used by millions of small business owners and individuals like you and me, but it's also used by some of the biggest companies in the world. For example, CNN, Forbes, UPS, eBay, Sony, and some celebrities use it as well like Jay-Z and Katy Perry. So it's extremely flexible and customizable and you can create any website using it. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you step-by-step -step how to create this website. For example, I'll show you how to get your domain name and hosting, which is basically like your website's address.com or your brand name.com. And then I'll show you how to install WordPress and log in. And then I'll show you how to install a amazing drag and drop builder. So you can literally create any website and you have total control over your website. So for example, right now we're inside the builder and if you want to change the text, we can click it and then we can just change it like a word editor. So inspire, and then we can also move things around like we can drag and drop like that. We can also undo like that. And we can also scroll down over here. We can adjust the column sizing. So this is perfect for people who want to create their first website, but it's also great for people who want to learn a new skill and maybe help their friend or maybe a client to create a website as well. And you can also move these different modules around just by dragging and dropping. On the left here, you've got all these different types of modules from like buttons, images, maps, um, like an opt-in form as well, um, testimonial modules. Um, it's super easy to create a website these days. So we can scroll down over here and I'll also show you how to add in a gallery so that you can basically like sort of showcase your work as well. So people can click into that and that opens up in a light box, right? So it's super cool. And you can also add in a video, which is really cool. And then you can also add in blog posts. So blog posts are great for driving traffic to your website because you can create content. And you can also add in a contact form and people can also upload like an image so you can give them like a quote or anything like that. And you can also add a map as well so people can find your business. And you can also add in your social media links and you can customize the bottom section here as well. So this is also a one page website so your customers can click into the different sections like your services, your gallery, your blog, and your contact as well. You can also create as many pages as you need, but I'm gonna be showing you how to create this website so you can learn the basics of creating a website and then you can really expand it later on. So the best thing about this tutorial is that you don't have to purchase anything expensive. Everything that we're gonna be needing is online and you can create this website using a Mac or a PC. And it's also gonna be fully mobile responsive, which is important because 50% of the traffic these days come from mobiles. So it's gonna fit on mobile, it's gonna fit on your tablet, your laptops, and also desktops as well. So that's pretty much it. So if you do have any questions or you have any issues, then you can always comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I've also got the timestamps listed in the description as well. So before we begin, I also wanna thank people who followed my video four years ago. I really appreciate all the kind feedback and it really inspires me to keep on creating these tutorials for you guys. So hopefully we can inspire more people to create websites and it's gonna be super amazing. So let's get started. So let's go over exactly what we need to create a website and also the cost to create our website. So step number one is we'll need to get a domain name and a domain name is essentially just your website address. For example, your businessname.com, your brandname.com. The second step is to get hosting. So hosting is like a computer that is on 24 seven and that allows us to save all our website files. For example, our text and images and all the content related to our website. Step number three is we'll need to install WordPress. So WordPress is a open source content management system and it's the most popular way to create a website. And that allows anyone to create a website without learning how to code. And it's also extremely versatile and customizable. For example, you can create a website, you can also create a blog and also an e-commerce website on WordPress as well. Step number four is I'll show you how to create your website and also design your website step-by-step. Step. So how much does the domain name cost? Normally a domain name costs around $15 every year. Hosting costs around $10 a month, but I do have a discount link below. WordPress is gonna be completely free. 
and creating a website is also going to be free as well. So hopefully we're going to be saving a few hundred or even a few thousand dollars to create this website ourselves, and it's going to be super amazing. So what we're going to do now is to do step number one and two and we can do that at the same place. So you can click the link down in the description below or you can open up your browser and here we can type in siteground.com forward slash go forward slash unlock. So this is a discount affiliate link. So if you do purchase through it, you'll get a discount and I'll get a commission for that sale. And that basically just helps me to create these free tutorials for you guys. So there's mainly three different plans that we can choose from. We've got the startup plan and the grow big plan and also the go geek plan. So generally the go geek plan is probably a little bit too much for what you need unless you're building an agency. So with the grow big plan, this is also a really great value as well um, where you can create unlimited websites. So if you want to create a website for yourself, your family, maybe a few business clients as well, you can host it under one account. So generally what I recommend most beginners is just the startup plan um, because it's the cheapest and you can also upgrade later on. So one of the main biggest benefits of SiteGround is that you can choose a data center closest to your audience. So for example, if you are located in Australia, they have a data center in Australia. So that basically means that your website's gonna load super quick for your audience. They've also got multiple data centers like in Asia, United States, and also Europe as well. So it's super amazing. So what we're gonna do is just click the get plan for the startup plan over here. And here we're gonna select register a new domain. Now, if you do have a domain already, for example, you've purchased it through like Namecheap or like GoDaddy, then you can select, I've already have a domain. So here we're gonna put in our new domain name. So for example, Parallax Tutorial. And then once you have that, you can click over here and you can also select a country specific domain name, for example, .com.au or .co.uk. In this case, I'm just gonna go with the .com extension and then we're gonna click on proceed. So over here for the account information, you will just need to put in your email as well as your client information, as well as your payment information. So I'm just gonna pause the video and quickly fill that out. Okay, so I just filled out all my information. So for the data center, you wanna select a data center which is closest to your audience. So for example, I'm located in Australia, I would go to Australia. If your main audience is the United States, you would go with the United States data center. So I'm gonna select that one and for the period, I generally recommend 12 months or more. That way you're gonna get the biggest discount, um, but you can also go month to month as well. So normally I would select 12 months, but for this tutorial, because I already have a few accounts in SiteGround, I'm just gonna select the month plan over here. So domain privacy is basically, it's gonna hide your information from the public. So sometimes people can find your information, for example, your email and also your name if they search up your domain name. And that's gonna basically help prevent any spam. Like normally there's a lot of marketing companies that might contact you. If you do want to sort of hide your information, then I recommend it, but it's not necessary. So here we're just gonna keep that as empty. We're gonna scroll down and confirm all these. And then we're gonna click on pay now. Okay, so your account was successfully created. Click on proceed to customer area. So from here, we're gonna click on set up site. And then we're gonna click on start a new website, click on select, scroll down, and we're gonna select WordPress, click on select. And here we're gonna enter in our email address that we're gonna create our login to our WordPress account. So here I'm just gonna type in parallax demo 91 at gmail.com. Then I'm gonna set in a login password. And then here we're gonna click on continue. And it's asking us if you want to add in this thing over here. We're not gonna do that, so we're gonna click on finish. And that's gonna take a few minutes to create our website installation. So while SiteGround is creating a new WordPress installation, what I recommend is going back to your email and you get two different emails, one which is asking you to verify your domain name and one to set in the data use consent preferences. So make sure you verify your domain name and make sure you set in your data consent preferences. And normally I just save the consent preferences without consenting and that should be all good to go. Okay, so we're basically all done. And here we're gonna click on manage site. And then we're gonna click on WordPress on the left. And we can click on install and manage. So scrolling down here, your WordPress installation has been created on our new domain name. So over here, we can click on login to admin panel. So click on that. And what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down and we wanna exit out of this WordPress starter because I'll show you everything that we need to know step-by-step. Step. So click on exit. 
congratulations, we've installed WordPress and this is your dashboard area. So this is basically what you'll see. So what your customers will see or your visitors will see is you can hover over on the top here and click on visit site and this is what they'll see. So obviously it doesn't look anything like what we want it to look like at the moment and that's because we haven't installed the theme yet. So what I do want to show you guys is how to log out and how to log back in to your dashboard area. So on the right over here, click on log out and this is your login panel. So for example, if we share our URL, this is going to be live. So to log back in to our dashboard, to our WordPress dashboard, type in forward slash WP dash admin and then click on enter and we'll be back here. So just put in your email that you signed up with before as well as your password. So fill that in and then click on login and that will basically log you back into your WordPress website. So I'm just going to save that password. So what I recommend you guys do is to just bookmark your page so that whenever you want to log in, you don't have to log into SiteGround and then click into that button, right? You just log in directly via the WP-admin login area. So what we're going to do first is basically just go through some basic settings to get you guys on the right page. So the first thing I recommend is going to settings and then going to permalinks. And we always want to make sure for the permalink settings that we've set in the sample post or the post name. So basically what that means is if we create like an about page or services page, the title, for example, about or the services will be included in the URL. So this is great for search engine purposes. We don't want our page to be like equals P equals one, two, three. That's not very good, right? So make sure to set a post name, scroll down and save changes. The next thing we're going to do is go and click on plugins. So plugins are essentially apps that add extra functionality for our website. So for example, on your phone, you've got apps to like, you know, dating apps, you've got social media apps, you've got apps to edit um, photos or videos, anything like that. Plugins are essentially the same thing, but for our website. So what I recommend you guys do is to deactivate all your plugins. So we're going to deactivate the WordPress starter. And I know a lot of people are following another video or something like that, and you might have a lot of plugins. What I do recommend is selecting all and then clicking on deactivate and clicking on apply because sometimes it might conflict with building our website and sometimes it might just be really, really overwhelming your dashboard area. So you do want to clean it up a little bit. So because um, we've installed SiteGround, um, this is the SiteGround Optimizer plugin. I'm just going to keep that activated for now. So we can click back on our dashboard area you can also click on the screen options here. Um, we can hide certain things on our dashboard. So it is a little bit messy, so we can click on that to sort of close it. Or what we can do is go back over here and we can just um, hide the display settings, All right? So I just wanna keep that one, that's fine, and close that like that. Now the next thing, we're gonna go to pages and we just wanna delete the pages which were pre-created. Just move that to trash and click on apply click on trash again and let's just delete that permanently and then we're going to go to post over here and if you have a sample post then you might want to delete that as well so I'm going to go to trash over here and I'm going to delete that permanently and close that and click back onto our dashboard and there we're pretty much good to go I'll show you how to install the theme now so to install the theme what you want to do is hover over appearance and click on themes and then click on add new so below this video, there's a link to download the theme. So this is the Themeify Ultra theme. And once you download it onto your computer, it should look something like this, themeify-ultra.zip. And if it does come into like a folder, um, you might need to right click and compress it back into the zip file because we have to upload the zip file as our theme over here. So click back over here and click on upload theme, choose file and select the theme open and then install now. So on the left, it is uploading. And once that is uploaded, we need to activate our theme. Okay. So what you want to do is click on activate. So for the skins and demo, I don't recommend selecting it. So if you do select it, um, it will basically import the skin onto your website and your website will look like this. But sometimes I think, you know, for most beginners, it's a bit overwhelming because you don't really know how to use it yet. So what I'm going to show you is how to create your website from scratch and it's going to be super easy anyway. So click on X over here 
and then let's go and view our website. So click on visit site. All right, so our website is taking shape. Now this is an amazing theme. It is a premium theme, um, Themify Ultra. In my opinion, it is a lot simpler to use than Elementor and Astra, um, mainly because you've got all the features that you need. So you don't really need to download anything additional. And I feel like it's a little bit overwhelming when you have so many different plugins and additional things on your website. So I partnered up with Themify to share it with you guys for free. If you do have any problems installing the theme, then make sure you drop a comment down in the comment section. Um, I'll also leave a FAQ um, link in the description below as well. So what I'm gonna show you now is how to add in your pages. So we're gonna click on pages over here. So to add a page, we want to click on add new. And we wanna close this. So here we're gonna add in a title. So for example, we're gonna add in home, a home page. Then we're gonna click on publish and publish again. So that should say page published. So what I recommend doing is closing this over here. And over here, they've got three dots. So click on that and then click on full screen mode. So deactivate it. So basically we can see the left panel now and I think that's a little bit easier so that you guys don't get confused. So click on the title one more time and then you can click on the link and that's gonna take you to that specific page. So if you wanna create more pages, you can also hover on the toolbar on the top here and click on page to create a new page. So let's go back over here. And what you're gonna notice is that home is going to have forward slash home. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this home page and just have it as our .com like that, okay? So what we need to do is hover over here, click on customize, and we need to set the home page settings. So we wanna click on back here, and then we wanna click on home page settings and set a static page. And then for the home page, we wanna select home and then click on publish again, and then we can close it. So what we're gonna be creating is just a one page website for this tutorial, but we can actually create more pages if you do want to as well. So we're just gonna stick with this for now and let's go back over here. So again, if you do wanna create more pages, you can click on all pages as well. And you can also manage all the pages over here. So for example, if you wanna create additional services page, then you can create and click on add new and that will be added in. So what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that we have a blank canvas to work with. So if we turn on the builder right now, then what's gonna happen is we have the modules on the left, we can drag it over here. But if we start building, we've only got this section to work with. We don't want the sidebar and we don't want the heading over here. So I'm gonna show you how to remove it. So let's just close the builder. Let's go back to here to our dashboard and go hover over Themify Ultra, Themify Settings. And you wanna scroll down to default layouts. So essentially we just wanna set in a default layout for our pages. So default page layout. And what I like to do is just open it in a new tab so I like to show you guys what we're doing. So let's remove this and remove sidebar. So over here, remove sidebar, no sidebar, hide the title, select yes. And you do also wanna hide the page comments as well. So set that one in and click on save. So if we go back over here, refresh the page, then it should be gone. Okay, so while we're here, I do wanna show you how to edit your header section, your header layout as well. So let's go back over here and scroll down a little bit and click on theme settings. So click on that and then click on theme appearance. Scroll down and over here we've got over a dozen different header designs, but generally what I recommend is sticking to the second one or the header top bar. Okay, so generally this is probably the best option. The other ones aren't as great in my opinion and this one is just the best for user experience as well and a lot of top websites use this one over here. So select that one over there and we can just click on save, go back and refresh it. Okay, that's done. So I'm gonna remove this tagline and maybe the search icon over here as well. So people can search things if you do wanna keep that, but I wanna remove that. So go back, scroll down, and let's remove, let's say the tagline and remove the search form. And let's click on save again and refresh it. Okay, looking really great. So here, this is the footer section, this is the header section. So I wanna remove this over here as well as the logo. So let's go back. 
scroll down to the bottom area over here and remove site logo and let's scroll down over here to the footer text so the very bottom and I want to remove footer text too okay so footer text 2 is this so let's select that and hide it and save once we have that then we can go back over here and just refresh the page so I think I want to change this layout as well for the footer so you can go back and let's go back over here and you can also adjust the footer design as well so I'm going to select the footer block and click on that and click on save so let's go back over here and refresh the page and this is looking really really awesome so now we've got a blank canvas where we can start building our website. So what I want to show you guys first is where you can set in your logo and also how to set in your main sort of navigation links as well. So for example, if we go back over here, how do we set in the links that scroll down to each of the different sections? So this is very simple. So I'm going to close this one over here and close this as well. So here we're going to click on customize and then we're going to click on back and then click on menus and then we're going to create a new menu so this is going to be our sort of top navigation menu so i'm going to name it top nav it doesn't really matter what you name it but this is just uh, for your own reference you want to make sure you set in the main navigation which is the top over here the footer navigation is if you want to create a menu for your footer section so if you want to create a new one then you want to select footer click on next and then you want to add your items in so you can add that in like that now if you want to add in the home page so basically we can click on that and that's going to add it to the menu on here right so it's not showing right now but if we add it in so let's say for example um, when people click on it then it's going to navigate to the home page so i generally don't do that because when people click on the logo then it will take them to the home page anyway so it's a waste of space so what I want to do is I want to create these links here. So about services, gallery, blog, and contact. So go back over here and that is a custom link. So that is not a page because it's linking down to each of the different sections on the page. So what we want to do is you want to copy your URL. So copy the URL from the top here without the other stuff. So copy that. So control C or you can just copy it like that. Paste it in. So control V paste it in like that and then here I want to put hash and then the first section is going to be about and then for the link text is going to be about so we're going to add to menu so just paste in the URL again and then this one is going to be hash the next section maybe services so make sure to keep this lowercase or lowercase link text is going to be services add to menu the next one is going to be we're going to paste that in again hash so the next one might be let's say blog or maybe gallery so gallery and then put in the link text add to menu and let's paste it in again hash and then this one could be I think blog so the link text is blog add to menu and then paste it in again so last one so hash contact okay make sure that's lowercase and add to menu so once you have that, we're going to click on publish and you'll see the links up here. So if you ever want to create a drop down menu, you want to click it and then just indent it below whichever you want to drop down from. So for example, if you want the link to drop down from about, then that's how you do it, right? So if you want it to drop down from gallery, so you just put it under like that. And you can also do another drop down if you do it like that. So it goes services and then like that. Okay, so let's put it all back and that is pretty much it for our menu okay so once you've done that we can click on publish and we can go back let's go back again and then we can go to themify options and then i want to click on advanced more options over here so here we can navigate to site logo and tagline so this is where you enter in or put in your logo so click on that click on site logo and then here we can change the site title so for example, I'm just going to put in logo for now and I'll show you guys how to create a free logo as well as a fab icon. So for example, the icon up here, how to create that for free and add it in a little bit later. Uh, we're not going to do it now, but you can add it in here if you do have one right now, but I'll show you how to do it later because we do need to set in the sizes and things like that. So just leave it for now. So let's go back over here and just put in a logo right now and you can also choose a font as well. 
Okay, so there's hundreds of different fonts to choose from. Now, I think one of the most important things about designing a website is knowing which font to choose. So what I want you guys to do is go to my website, so hoganchua.com and hit on enter. So once you're here, you can hover over resources and then click on website design guide. And this is just a simple guide that I created for you guys so that you can sort of refer back to it and sort of understand a little bit more about web design because I think that when we're creating a website on WordPress, you know, years and years ago, it was about, we didn't have the tools to create it. Now we have like so many different drag and drop tools. It's not really about the tools that we use to create it. It's more about, you know, how do we design it? Like how do we make it look good um, every single time? So with this design guide, you can actually use it for designing other things as well, like for your business card or maybe like your logo, you can use the same tips um, for it as well. So it's really, really important to understand. So the first tip that I recommend is to just choose one font. Now, the reason why I recommend it is because years and years ago when I was creating my first tutorial, everyone chose like, you know, three, four different fonts and it didn't look very good. So I do want to explain it. So if we go to like Apple or some of the top websites in the world, and you can actually download a Chrome extension, it's called, um, what font. So you can download that and you can hover over the websites that you like. And what you're going to notice is that they basically just use one font and maximum probably two fonts on their website. So they just use the size as well as, you know, the boldness of the text to sort of differentiate the text a bit. So as you can see, it's very, very consistent. They don't use, you know, a lot of different fonts. So same thing if you go to like Rolex as well. So click on that, you hover over here, right? So the same as well, scrolling down, same and the same as well. So let's go to Tiffany and co and let's click on that. And over here, they do have two. So they've got a different one for their heading and a different one for like their body text as well. So I'll explain a little bit about that um, in a second. So same thing with Uber. So let's hover over here, Uber move. It's pretty much the same one. So these two, yep. So they use the same as well. So here, so we want to go back over here. There's two different typefaces that you have to understand. So these are the main ones. Now there's a sans serif and also a serif typeface. So if you followed my other videos, older videos, I have explained it before, but everyone's probably, you know, new. So I do want to explain it. Now, if you look at the text on the edges, it's plain and also the strokes are even width. So on the other hand, the serif typeface is they've got curves on the side and also it's thick and thin strokes. So this one looks a little bit more traditional, elegant, and it's got a handcrafted look. So if you go to Tiffany and co, you're going to notice that they have it for their logo and also for the heading because mainly because they want to appear elegant and maybe it's like a handcrafted feel to it. So that's why they have it. So same thing with Rolex, how they have it in their logo. So that is a serif typeface. But when we go to Apple, right, they obviously want to appear modern. It's not really like a elegant type of handcrafted thing, right? It's more about tech. So they use a sans serif typeface. So you have to think about your brand and think about how you want to appeal to your audience. Like is what you're creating, maybe something you are creating by hand, maybe you want to use the serif typeface. Maybe if you just want to have a simple and clean website, I'd personally just recommend sans serif for 80% of the websites um, that you guys can create. So this is just simple, clean and modern and most websites actually use this. Okay. So these are some of the top five that you can actually use that I recommend for most beginners to start off with. And you've also got some to start off with as well for the serif typeface. Okay. So now if you do want to choose, like, let's say this one over here, what I do recommend is only using it for your headings. Like for example, if you go to Tiffany and co using it for your headings, um, down here, headings, scrolling down Okay, headings over here and then also for your logo as well. So same thing for Rolex, they only use it for their logo and they just use the sans serif for their body heading fonts and everything like that. Okay. Because if you have too much of that font, then it's just going to look really sort of old. And I don't think that personally looks very, very good. So that's why I recommend. Um, but what I do recommend most of the time is probably sticking with a sans serif and then you won't go wrong. So scrolling down over here. So for the body font size, you do want to keep it between 14 and 18. You don't want it to be too small or too large. Too large is just going to look really, really ugly. Um, especially if you have a large body of text like this. So this one is pretty good, right? 16, 15, that's very, very good. And also for the line length. 
So sometimes I see a lot of people create a website and you've got one huge block of text and that doesn't look very good. So you wanna try and break that up into maybe two different sections like this, or you could have maybe a little bit wider, but I guess you guys get the picture, but just don't have like, you know, huge paragraphs from left to right. So you wanna break it up. Now the next thing is, which is really, really important is the text hierarchy. So if for example, you wanna create a heading and a subheading, you don't want something like this because you want something where when people look at it, they know what to focus on. So first of all, you wanna focus on the headline and then the subheadline, right? If you look at that one, you're like looking at two different things at the same time, okay? So same thing over here. So you do wanna differentiate this a little bit better um, by maybe having something like this um, having a color and maybe you can also increase the line or letter spacing and then scrolling down You can also do something like this where you've got the heading where it's sort of a little bit more neutral color um, A little bit lighter than the heading over here and you've also capitalized it as well Right, so it just looks a lot better. So if you go to Apple, they've got really really good hierarchy So new and then smaller big and then not so big All right, so people focus on this first then this and then maybe over here and then the button. You don't want something like this over here, okay? So let's go back over here and scroll down. And what I personally do recommend is just choosing one accent color to start off with because a lot of people, you don't know which color to choose, right? And then a lot of people choose like three different colors and use it not consistently throughout your website and that just looks really bad. So what I do recommend is maybe reading up on color meanings. So like Google it and find out, you know, which color suits your brand. You also got to think about your competition as well. So you can go to this website over here and let's say, for example, I want to choose maybe this pink color over here, just copy that. And then you've got the color code. So you can just basically choose sort of one color and use sort of different shades of that color on that website. So you can actually go over here and you can also go to Adobe. And what you can do is find an image on Unsplash. And let's say if you like um, classic and we scroll down and maybe you like a certain picture with a certain mood. So you can download that image, download that image. Let's say for example, let's just download that and I'll show you quickly and head back over here, close it, select file. And then we can select that file, open. And then we can choose a color palette basically by selecting on the left here, right? Different uh, moods that we can extract from the picture. And then we can use these colors consistently on our website. So that's what I recommend if you do wanna go that route. Um, but if you're just starting out, maybe just choose one color and then use sort of the same shade, right? It's gonna make your website look more consistent and it's gonna look really good. Now, if you don't know which color to choose, like for example, when you're building out your website, you might be thinking, what color should I choose? Now, generally for the header section and for the footer section, you wanna keep these neutral colored. Like for example, header and footer, you wanna either keep it white or maybe like dark gray or something like that, or a transparent header, because you don't wanna choose, let's say a color. Let's say if you do choose a color, for example, we choose uh, a random pink color. And when we add an image over here, it's gonna be harder to match. Right, so think about if you're building out your own house, if you're painting your room pink, then it's gonna be harder to match with the furniture. But if you have just a white wall and you have a very, very neutral color, you know, flooring and things like that, it's gonna be very, very easy to match. So any picture will be good. So that's what I don't recommend, you know, choosing like a colored uh, header and footer section. So if you go to the top website, same thing, very neutral colored. The Rolex is transparent, which I'll show you how to make. Uh, Tiffany & Co, just white, uber, neutral as well. It's not like some pink color or orange color. That's gonna be really, really ugly. So that's when you use a neutral color if you don't know which color to use, especially for like buttons or you can also use it to separate content. So if you go back on my website over here, so I use a neutral color to create a background to separate content. So this is very, very useful. So if we zoom out of our website a little bit more, so you can see that I sort of break up each of the different sections with either a neutral background color or an image and then white color and then an image like that. Same thing for Apple and we scroll down over here and they break it up with some neutral colors like that. Same thing and a lot of websites do it. So that is the basics of it. And for the button styles and colors, um, I'll show you that a little bit later on. So let's get back into creating our website. So let's go back over here 
So right now we're on the header section and the header wrap. So here I would either keep it a white background or maybe a dark background. So in my case, I'm going to change it to a dark gray. So the color code for this dark gray is maybe 222. So type that in like that. So that looks really, really good. Now, obviously we need to change this to be white and also the links to be white. So to do that, we can uh, minimize that. And first of all, we can change the header link, which I believe is over here. So here we're going to change that to white. So bring that to white. Now, if you have like, let's say a white background, you might need to change this to a dark gray. So scrolling down over here, you can also change the link hover as well to something like a lighter gray. So when people hover over that, then people know that's a link. So here, once you've got that, we can minimize it. We can minimize that as well. Here is your menu navigation. So you want to navigate to main navigation. So click on that. And these should be your menu links over here. So we can change it over here, but I do think these are the active links as well. So let's say if we change the menu links, scroll down over here, let's change it to white. Oops, let's just type in the color code white, FFF, right? So it's not going to change. Now, the reason why it doesn't change is because this is the active link. And basically what that means is that let's say if I am, let's say I clicked on iPad over here. So I'm going to close this for a second, click on iPad. And you'll see that this is the active link color. So I'm on the iPad page, the active link color is a light gray. So these ones are white. So if I click on iPhone, active link color is gray because I'm on that actual page. So if we go back over here, we are on this page for these links. So we want to go and click on menu active link and we want to change it probably to a white color. So you can type in FFF and that's going to change. So once you do that, we're going to click on this one over here. So I'm not sure why that is not removing. Give me a second to publish that. So let's close that for a second and we want to change the active link hover. So when we went back over here, when we set the header link hover, so we can click back over here and what we can do is click on plus. That's going to add this to our sort of color palette thing on our website. So we can reuse that same color. That way we can keep our design consistent throughout our website. So we can go back over here, click on color. Okay. So I'm not sure what is going on. Okay. So you can't actually click it. I'm going to close it for a second and let's come back and click on customize. Let's go back to where we were. So we were at the main navigation. So let's click on that again and click on active link hover, click back over here. Okay. That should appear now. Let's select that. So when we hover over that, then it should give a light effect. So this is the same effect that we see on Apple. So when we hover over it, it gives a white color a little bit, right? So it's very, very subtle and that's very, very nice. So let's go back over here. And then we can also change the drop down container. So if you have a drop down container or the links, you can edit the colors over here as well. So let's just close that for now. And what we can do is you can also scroll down to the footer section over here and click on footer. You can change the footer wrap color. So for example, you want to change it to a dark gray as well. And you can change it like that. So we can keep it like that or you can keep it white. Sometimes the white color looks a little bit more friendlier as well. So scrolling down over here, we can change the footer font to white because we want to make sure that's visible. So we can type or just pull that in like that and footer link. Let's just change that to white as well. Pull that in. And I think that looks pretty good. So once you have that, we can click on publish and we can close that. So, so far that is pretty good. What I'm going to show you now is how to add in your social media links down in the footer section. So let's go over to our dashboard section, Themify Ultra, Themify Settings, scroll down and click on social links. So all we need to do is paste in our Twitter profile or Facebook profile and all our social media profiles in the link area. So for example, we can copy over our Facebook profile URL, just copy that like that, come back over here and paste it in like that. Right? So obviously this one will be Twitter. I'm just going to paste in a dummy URL 
So paste that all in and paste it in for Pinterest as well. So now if we don't see, let's say you wanna add in Instagram, you don't see it, we can click on add link. And instead we can type in our own title. So Instagram and paste in your Instagram profile. And for the icon, click on insert icon. And we can search for Instagram. So hopefully we can find it. That does look a little bit old. I think that's the old version of it, but we can click on font awesome and we can select the new version here. So click on that and that should be good. So for the icon color and background, we're gonna leave it as default for now. Click on save. Now that's not gonna display yet on our page. What we wanna do is we wanna to navigate to our widget section to display it. So hover over appearance and then click on widgets. Scroll down. So we want to look for Themify social links, which is over here on the bottom. So I click it and we're gonna try and drag it up, sort of wiggle it up and put it into the footer social widget, drop it in. And then what I recommend doing is selecting open link in a new window. So when people click on that, it's going to open up in a new tab, right? Cause I don't want people leaving my website um, and I want people to stay on my website. So that's probably what I recommend and is best. So let's click on save. Then we can head back onto our website and then we've got our social links down here as well. So that is looking really, really great. What I wanna show you guys now is how to add in your hero image. So our hero image over here, and I'll also show you how to crop your image and also how to add in text and really build out your website. So this part is gonna be really fun, so make sure you stick around. So what I wanna show you guys now is how to create this hero image section over here. So the first step is to find our image. I've also got all the images that we're gonna be using in the tutorial in the description below. So if you do wanna download it, then it is in the description. So if you wanna find your own image, you can go to a website called unsplash.com and here you can find free images that you can use for your personal or commercial projects as well. So let's say for example, we wanna search for nature and then click on enter. And I'll show you how we need to download the images because we can't download an image which is too big. So let's say for example, you wanna download this image over here. So just click into it first. And instead of downloading free here, you wanna click on the drop down and you wanna select on the medium size because if we download like this original size, it's probably a little bit too big for our website and that's gonna make it load really slowly. So click on download and that can be your hero image. So now if you do have your own images, then what I recommend you guys do is to make sure to crop your images. So go to photo.com and this is a free sort of image editor which allows you to easily crop your images. So click on edit photo and then for example, we can drag in our image from our desktop into here and we can crop the image easily. So step number one is scrolling down to the resize. So for example, on my web design guide, I've also got a image size guide, which you can follow. So you don't need to get exactly that size, but it is sort of a good sort of guideline that you can go by. So for the hero image, this is probably a good size. So 1,800 times about a thousand. Then we can go back over here so here, click on resize and we can change the size. So here, make sure this lock is selected so that resizes um, proportionally. So let's say for example, we crop it to 1,800 like that. And then as you can see, it's 1,072. So I'll show you how to crop that off. So click on apply. And then we'll go back over here to crop. And then we need to change this number over here on the right to 1,000 like that, and I'm gonna click on got it. And here we can arrange it to where we wanna crop it. So it's really, really important that we do crop out images because creating a website is sort of like building a house and your images are sort of like the wood or the bricks. So if you can't really cut the wood to the right size and you put it onto your website, it's not gonna be good. Especially if it's like uh, not big enough, right? Because it can be super blurry and your website's gonna look low quality. So save it onto your computer. So we can just save it as hero and then click on download and then that's fine so that's the basics of cropping your image then we can go back onto our website over here and i do also want to show you guys another resource which is important so if you can't find free images on unsplash then what i do recommend is if you do have the budget then go and pay for some images because you're going to find a larger variety of images so for example if you are a carpet cleaning business or any type of sort of more uh, specific business, you won't really be able to find the right images on Unsplash and you'll be able to find much better images here as well. So let's go back over here 
click on turn on builder. You can also turn on the builder on the top over here as well. So when you hover over here, this is your row. So the purple is your row. So what we wanna do is add a row background. So hover over here and then click on the paintbrush styling. So click into that, click on background. And here for the background type, you can select image, you can select gradient. You can also upload a YouTube video. So you can paste in your YouTube URL into here and that video will start playing. So let's go back and you can click on slider as well to add that in. But what I recommend is just adding a static image like that and click on plus to upload your image, select files. And then I'm gonna upload the images which I've prepared already. So you can download it in the description. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of hold and select all. So I'm gonna upload all these images because we're gonna be using it anyway. So I wanna upload it all at once. So click on open. So once that is done, I'm gonna select this image over here. So the here image, and this is the size. So it doesn't exactly have to be like 1,800. If it's below sort of 500 kilobytes, that should be good to go. So click on insert file URL, and that's gonna add in our image. So what we wanna do for the background mode is you either wanna select full cover or you wanna select parallax scrolling. So we're gonna select parallax scrolling because it looks quite nice. So what we need to do is we need to stretch that image because we can't see him, right? So we need to hover over the row. And if you see it, it's like this light sort of opaque uh, purple color and that's the row and we can click it and drag it. So that's gonna add some padding or some spacing to that image. So we're able to see that image a little bit more. So I'm gonna do it to about 150. So that's about 151, that's fine. And what you wanna do, so that's the top. What you wanna do is hover over the bottom and click it and drag it as well. So make sure you try to keep the spacing even. So we're gonna drag it down and make it maybe 250 as well. So let's scroll down and drag it down to 250. Okay, so that looks really, really nice. Now the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you stretch the image from left to right. So what we need to do is hover over the row again and hover over the gear icon, click on row options, and for the row width, select full width. So that essentially means it goes from left to right. So over here, the gear icon and row options, full width. Then the next thing that we wanna do is we can add in our text module. So we can click on done. So that's our background image done. We can scroll down and we can look for the text module. So click it and just drag it and drop it. So very, very easy. So here we're just gonna add in a text. So parallax like that highlight the text and what I recommend is setting it to heading one. So normally for each page, I only recommend one heading one font, okay? So make sure to set that in. And then we can also click on styling and this is where you can change the style of it. So for example, the color and everything like that. But what we're gonna do is just click on done. So I'll show you that in a second. So the next thing we wanna do is add a sub headline. So drop it below there like that and let go. And I'm just gonna copy over the text cause I'm kind of lazy. So copy that and let's just paste that in. So learn how to create a beautiful website and then click on done. So to add a button, very simple again. So look for a button somewhere over here and drag it below that. So here you can change the button size. I'm gonna leave it as default. You can also choose the shape. So generally if you choose like a circle sort of button it does look a little bit more friendlier. Uh, rounded as well. This one looks very very modern. So if we go to like let's say uber.com They use the uh, sort of the the square one over here. So it looks very very professional and modern um, So we're gonna go back over here and that really depends on your brand So I'm gonna keep it maybe rounded right a little bit more friendlier and here you can select the background type I'm gonna keep it as solid and then we can scroll down and for the button text I want to type in begin now so this could be like shop now or contact me or get a quote. Here, we need to put in the link. So basically what I wanna do is I want to link it to maybe my contact section on the page or a different page. So to do that, we need to hover over contact and then right click, and then we can copy the link address. So copy that and go over here and just paste that in. So basically when people click that, it's going to link to the contact section. So if we click that, it's gonna link down over here. Now you can link it to any page that you want. This is just an example. So we can go over here and we can change the button color. But personally, I don't like to change the color over here um, because the colors don't look that great. 
Um, I'll show you that in a second. So click on done. Now the next step is to style it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hover over the row again, click on styling, and we're going to click on font. And then we're going to scroll down and click on text align. So we're going to align everything into the center. So basically what that means is that if we sort of set in like the font for the row, it's going to affect everything within that row. So we don't have to set it individually for each of the modules here. So sometimes that can be a lot easier and it's a little bit less confusing. So here we can set the color to be white and that just makes sure that it's visible. So let's go back over here and click on done. So let's click on save first and you can also click on here on the drop down to save as revision. So for example, if you finish like a section in your homepage, we can do like hero done and then you can put like a date or something like that and then click on OK. And if you do make a big mistake, then you can go over here and load that revision. So we can click on save and close it. And what you're going to notice is there is a gap on the top over here. So to remove that gap, we can go to edit page. And we need to remove the gap every time if we do want to have a full width uh, content width, right? So we want to set here to full width like that, and then click on update. And then we can scroll back up and click over here and then click back onto our home page. And then that should be done. So you guys are probably wondering how do you change it to a transparent header? So I do want to show you that really quickly since we're here already. So go back over here and scroll down to themify custom panel. Again, click on the page appearance and click on header, scroll down to header background type over here, click on transparent. So sometimes you do need to edit the header text color because the background is a different color. You might need to make sure your links are visible. So keep that in mind, click on update. Let's refresh that page and that's looking really good. So the next thing I want to show you is how to change the size of the text and also the button color. So click on turn on builder and then click into the module. So that one over here. So what you can do is we can change the heading one size. So go back to styling and click on the tab and click on heading. And here you can change the heading one font. So generally there's two ways of doing it. And personally, I recommend the second way, which I'll show you later, but this is the first way. So click into that. And here we can change the font family because we already set the body font to Montserrat. I don't really need to change that again. So we do want to change the size. So make it a little bit bigger, maybe like 70. Let's just click it and drag it maybe a little bit bigger. Let's try 80. So 80 is a decent size. Here we can also change the letter spacing. So I might want to make it a little bit more modern so we can change it to one letter spacing like that. And you can also text transform it like that looks really good. Scrolling down to the text shadow. So the text shadow is very, very useful. So try to um, keep this in mind when you're building your website because you always want to make sure your text is visible when you're putting it on top of images. And this is a really great way of doing it. So you can do one, one, oops. So that's meant to be, that's meant to be one. So let's click delete that. That's one. And then for the blur, we're going to set five. And as you can see, it adds sort of like a white uh, shadow. And that does look really, really nice. Um, it sort of enhances the text a little bit. And what we can do is click on the color and we can select black. And then that just creates a really, really nice shadow. So you can see the text, drop the opacity or the transparency down to like maybe 0 0.1, something like that. And then that looks really, really great. So what we want to do is sort of want to reduce the spacing over here and we can sort of click on the bottom here. So we can change it to one for the margin for the bottom area like that. So we can click on done and that's going to reduce the spacing. So you can actually click on the next text module and we can change the sizing over here as well. So click styling font and then here we can just type in the size. So like 24, uh, maybe a little bit too big. So maybe 22, something like that looks pretty good. Then we can scroll down. Um, we can also go back over here to the margin. So let's say you want to move the spacing over here. So you can reduce the margin like this as well. So minus maybe like three and maybe minus five. So that's going to move the button up a little bit because it's going to um, create a negative margin. So padding is similar. So padding, for example, is let's say we do hundred. 
So basically think of the padding as the space inside the box. So that's padding. Uh, margin is sort of outside of the box. So for example, um, we do like top, sort of top margin 100. That's gonna appear outside of that box over there. Okay, so sometimes that does take time to get used to, but generally I only do sort of margin when I need to reduce the spacing like that. And padding, normally I only add it like when I need to add spacing like that. Let's click on done and we can click on save. And then for the button, we can click into that, click on the styling, click on button link, click on background. And here we can change the color. So before when I was talking about the web design, um, what I recommend is either using a neutral color, like a neutral dark gray, or maybe a white color, or just a sort of ghost button like this. Or you can just go to the website over here and pick an accent color. So let's say, for example, I wanna pick this maybe pink one, or maybe let's try maybe yeah, this one over here, sort of red color, okay? And then we can go back over here. Oops, go back over here, paste that in. So that might look okay. Um, maybe let's change it to pink. I think it does look a little bit nicer. Go back and close it, paste it in, and then you can add the color like that. And then for the link, we do need to change that to white so it's visible, okay? Then we must set a hover color. So when people hover over it, what color does it turn into? So generally what I recommend is either hovering it back into a neutral color or a different shade of the same color, right? So you don't wanna hover it into like, a random color at all uh, because it's just going to look really bad. So what we're going to do is make a lighter version of it. So click on there, come back and let's paste that in like that. So when people hover over it, it's going to be a lighter effect. So this is essentially the same effect that you see on Uber as well, like that, it goes lighter. So on a lot of websites, that's what they do. So you don't pick a random color, otherwise it's going to have a bad design. So once that is done, I might change the sort of font as well within there. So let's go back and click on general, click on font. Here, I'm gonna change it to text transform. Maybe make the size a little bit smaller if I can, maybe 14. And then I'm going to, let's add some letter spacing. So let's try one, maybe two, like that. Okay, so that looks nice and modern, in my opinion, looks really, really good. So we're gonna click on done and then we're gonna click on done and close. Okay, so that looks really great. And that's probably the hardest part of the tutorial. The rest of the stuff is gonna be super easy. So we're gonna speed through that. But the next section that we're gonna create is where we're gonna put in our quote. This can be like a mission statement or a quote that you believe in. So I'm just gonna copy over the text and come back over here. So what we're gonna do is add a new row. So we can click on the plus icon and select the row with just one column. So you can select two columns, three columns as well. So for example, this one will be one column and two columns. This one is just one. So let's go back over here and click on that. And that's your column. So to add in a text, drop in a text module. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste the text and match style or paste as plain text. So there's no styling to it, okay? So you can also click on toggle toolbar over here and click on that and paste it in as well. So you don't copy any styling over. So the first thing that we can do is maybe add some spacing. So we can add some spacing. We can hover over the top here and sort of drag it down to maybe 75. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom, 75 as well. That's all good. Then what we could do is maybe we can align the text into the middle. So let's click over here and click on font. And then we can align it into the center. So what we're gonna do is adjust the size as well. So we're gonna adjust the size for the quote. So we're gonna change the font to 22. I think that looks okay. And maybe we can leave it as that. The only thing that I do wanna change is if we go to text, is I wanna change the font size over here. So sometimes if you have, you wanna have two different sizes, for example, this one over here and this one over here, you want it to be different, then what you need to do is go back over here. We're gonna set this one to maybe heading six, like that. So then what we could do is go back to styling and then click on general, click on heading, and then click on heading six font. So that basically means we can edit the heading six font in here as well. So I'm gonna adjust the size a little bit. So maybe let's say 12, I think that looks okay. And maybe adjust the letter spacing to one like that. 
So that just adds some nice sort of hierarchy in terms of the text because we sort of want to differentiate it. So remember I sort of mentioned it before, something like this. So we do want to make sure it looks really nice by doing something like this. Okay, so let's go back over here and I think that looks okay. So the only thing that I want to do is maybe change the font color. So let's go back to the general. So here for the font color, I might change it to a dark gray, so 222. And I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, so let's go back over here and compare it. Maybe let's try and make it a little bit smaller or maybe add some letter spacing, something like that. Okay, I think that looks really, really nice. So here we can click on done and that is done. So to add in the next section, we can click on plus and click on two columns. So on the left, we're going to add an image. So drop that in here. And then we're going to select, let's say, I think this one over here. And I've cropped the size to about 800 to 533. Click on insert file. And then we've got our image. So then we can go over here, click on done. We can drop in a text module into the right hand side like that. And I'm going to come back over here and just paste in everything. So copy that and come back here. And let's just paste that in like that. And I want to change this one to heading two. So let's change this to heading two like that. Okay, so as you can see, it might have edited everything. So I'm going to control Z or command Z to undo. And I want to hit on enter one time. So I think I accidentally set heading two to the whole entire paragraph. So let's set it heading two like that. And that should be fine. Now the next step that I want to do is I sort of want to align this into the middle of the image. So what you can do is hover over here and hover over the gear icon and then select align into the middle. So over there, and that looks quite nice already. So the next thing that we can do is we can zoom out of the page a little bit and we can also rearrange the column sort of width of that. So we can hover over the image just on the outer line and then we can sort of drag it inwards like that. So I think that looks a little bit more balanced. So maybe let's try around 35% like that. So we can zoom back in and that's looking really, really good. So the only thing that I want to show you to do is maybe add in a divider line to sort of separate our content a little bit. So as I said before, we sort of want to separate our content with divider lines and maybe like a background and then white space and then a image. So here we're going to add a divider line. So let's go back over here and let's drop in a divider. So click on done, look for a divider, drop that below that like that. And here what we're going to do is change the color. So basically what we want to do is either keep it like a neutral color. So like a, maybe a dark gray or a light gray, but in this case, I'm going to use this color over here. So let's click back over here. So the button, so I forgot to actually click on the styling and the button link. I forgot to set in that color. So what you probably want to do is click into it and add it to your color palette like that. So we can reuse the color anytime. Let's go back over here and let's click back into the divider line. Sometimes it can be quite challenging, but you should be able to get it. And let's click back onto that line just like that. Set the thickness to two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the divider width to custom. And then we're going to align it into the middle like that. So I do want to add maybe some spacing. So what we're going to do is hover over that and click it and sort of drag it. So we're going to add maybe, maybe 20 or 30 pixels. I think that looks okay. Sometimes you do need to play around with it a little bit. So let's have a look. Okay. So I think that looks quite decent. Let's click on save and that's done. So the next section is over here. We're scrolling down and you can see this section over here. I'm also going to show you how to add in a link. So let's just add in a link, go back over here and then let's create a link. So hover and select the link that you want to create, the text, and then click on insert link. And then depending on what you want to link it to, so for example, if you want to link it to my website, so copy it from the URL, copy that, and then we can go back and paste it in like that. So generally what I personally like to do is click on link options and open link in a new tab, especially if it's linking outside of my website, and then click on update. So that's done. So here we're going to zoom back in to our page and we're going to create the next section. So the next section is we need one, two, three. So we need three different columns 
And what we can do is let's go and drag, select this one first. So one column first. And what we're going to do is create a text module, drag it in, in there like that, change it to services, set it to heading two, like that. And then I might add some spacing above that to that row. So maybe 75 again. And then the next section that we're going to do is click on done, come back over here. We're going to drop in three rows. So on the left here, rows, we're going to select three and drag it below services like that. So you got one, two, and three. Then what we're going to do is add in the featured module. So drop that in like that. And I'm going to come back over here and just copy over some of that lorem ipsum text, uh, web design. So let's come back over here. So for the feature title, this can be like the services that you offer. So web design, paste that in. And we're gonna scroll down. For the layout, we can change it, but I'm gonna keep it as default. I'm gonna sort of remove that circle because personally, I don't really like it. And remove the stroke as well, as well as the color. And then we're gonna scroll down over here and you can change the icon. So you can click on the icon and then we can search for desktop. So this is maybe something to do with web design. So find an icon that relates to your title. You can also upload your own image as well. Then once you've done that, then we can simply just, you can link it to your specific page as well, but we don't have any links at the moment. Now we can simply just duplicate the module two times like that and drag it into the respective sections. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to first, we're going to go to the styling and then we're going to go to font and we're going to make sure we aligned everything in the center first. And maybe we could, let's add some padding to the bottom, 75, like that. So what we can do now is what I recommend is maybe adding some sort of divider background to it. So since we're here, we can go to the background and instead of image, we can put in background color. So what I recommend is a light gray. So F6, F6, F6 and that can really separate your content area. So let's refer back to the top module again of over here. We do want to add some spacing over here. So make sure everything's even just like that. Should be pretty simple to do. So whenever you have trouble, then you can zoom out and you can look at your sort of page from a bird's eye view and that way you can sort of adjust it to what you need it to do. So what you can do is obviously just click into that and maybe change it to, you know, whatever service you offer and change the icon as well. That is done. The next section we're going to add in our gallery. So we can just duplicate the text module over here and let's just zoom back into maybe 75%. So here we can add in a new row. So over here, we're just going to add one and then we can drag this and drop it into here like that. And let's just change the title. So gallery. So this could be like your work, your portfolio. It doesn't really matter. We can also align it into the center over here as well, if you do want to. So we can also add some spacing. So 75. And then we can drop in a gallery module. So click on done. And over here, you can drag in like an image module, maybe a gallery. You can also use, let's say video, as well as a slider as well to display your sort of work. So we're going to use a gallery module. So drag that in and put it below. And I'm going to select my images. So I'm going to use, let's say this one over here, gallery five, and I've already cropped these ones for you to about 1,600. So generally that's a pretty good size and I recommend cropping them to the same size if you do want to sort of upload a gallery. So we're going to select this one over here and I think this one over here and then maybe this one and this one. So one, two, three, four, five, six images. Click on add to gallery and then click on update gallery and that's going to show our images. So what, what I want to do is I want to change the columns to maybe three because I've only got six images. So let's change it to three and that's displaying good. So the only thing I want to change is the thumbnail width and also the thumbnail height. So if we go back to the gallery and if you notice that I've uploaded as 1000 in width and 600 in height. So what I want to do is halve it. So that will be 500 and that will be 300. And then what we could do here is change the thumbnail width. So I don't want it to be, let's say 300 and 200. I want it to be 500 and also 300. 
So that's going to ensure that the quality of the images is retained because it's cropped sort of proportionally to how I uh, resized it. So let's say if you upload the image to be 800 and maybe 600 or something like that, then you still want to halve it. So it'll be 400 and 300. Okay. So let's scroll down and that's done. Let's add some extra padding onto that as well, if you do need to. So that's all good. And let's add some over here on the top if we can. So accidentally added the sort of the top uh, margin over here. So I do want to click on this one and click on styling. And I think I accidentally added to the margin on the top. So maybe let's just remove that anyway, like that. Okay. So I think that's done. Now the next section is we're going to add the video. So this is really great because you can put in a video here and you can also do a sort of really, really nice parallax on the background to showcase your work. Let's go back over here. And this is just one column as well. So click on that and we can add in a background first. So click on styling, background, image and select background image. And we're going to select this one if here. So for video background section and then insert, and then that's done. So here we're going to select the background type to be parallax scrolling. And then we're going to stretch the image a tad to maybe let's say 50 or 75 again. So same for the bottom 50. Then once you've done that, then all you need to do is click on done and drag in a video module. So for example, we can just grab the video, drop it in there, and then we can paste in the YouTube URL. So we're going to paste in this one over here. So I'm just going to grab the URL. So copy that. Um, you can also click on share and grab the URL as well. Let's go and paste that into here, just like that. And then we've got the video. And sometimes when you upload a video, Sometimes you have different thumbnails, right? Because when you upload to YouTube, you want to create a thumbnail that stands out. And a lot of times people add text over it. And if you do want to cover over that, which I do recommend is clicking on overlay image and clicking on select, and then you can overlay it with your own sort of background image. So for example, I might overlay it with the same one like that and click on it. And I think that just looks really a lot better. Right, so you can overlay it with a nicer image and it's going to look a lot more cleaner and professional. So it suits and blends in with your website design. So what we're going to do is click on done. And I want to create sort of a background overlay. So I want to go to styling and row overlay. So here I'm going to select a black. So it covers that. And then I want to drop the opacity down to maybe let's say 0.5 like that. So it's a little bit darker, right? Because you don't want it to be that uh, colorful. Like if you leave it like that, it's just too much. Let's do it 0.5. And then we can also set a hover overlay. So click on that. Let's drag that back to black. And maybe let's drag that down a tad to 0.8. So let's click on done. And we're going to click on save and close it. So scrolling down to our video section, so let's say when we hover over it and when someone is viewing that video, then it sort of creates a cinematic effect, which I think is really, really nice. And when they click on the video and they click on play, then they can view it like that. Okay, so that looks really, really nice. And we've done the video section. What we're going to learn now is how to add blog posts to your website. So adding blog posts is really important, not just because you want to write something and you want to share your story. It's mostly about driving traffic to your website. So for example, if you are a carpet cleaning business and if people are looking for you, right, sometimes they don't search for carpet cleaning or your brand name, but instead they search for something like how to get rid of carpet stains or something like that. So carpet stains. And then they can scroll down and maybe this one over here. So this is a blog post, right? So you can create a blog post and that's going to drive a lot of traffic to your website. So people are looking for maybe getting rid of coffee stain or a wine stain, and they might read your article, but it might be your business. So they might read it and might think, okay, maybe I don't want to clean it myself. Maybe I want to hire someone. So it's definitely a really, really awesome way to drive traffic to your business. And I highly recommend 
um, learning a little bit more about SEO as well. So I do have an SEO tutorial on my channel. So make sure to check that out. But right now I just want to show you guys how to add in post and display it on your page. So what we can do is hover on the top over here and instead of page, we're going to click on post. So here we can put in a title. So I might just put in, we are unique. So the purpose of this is just to show you how to add it in. So that's your title. And here we can, on the right, we can click on categories. We can add a new category. So this one could be education. And then click on add new category, scroll down. You can put tags as well, but we're going to add in a featured image, click on set featured image. And we're going to add in this picture over here. So again, I cropped the sort of blog post images to around 1100 by 700. Click on set featured image. And then that's pretty much it. So once you've done that, click on publish and publish again. And once that is done, we can click here and click on the link. So this is your blog post. And to add our content, because we're using the Themify Builder, it's going to make it a lot easier for us to add it in. So we can click on turn on builder and here we can start adding in all these different types of modules. So let's say for example, we can go to Laura Ipsum to just get some dummy text. So we're going to copy over some dummy text and click on that. And let's click over here, copy that. Let's come back over here and we can drag in a text module just like that. And we can paste in the text like that. We can also arrange the sort of padding as well. So we can maybe add some padding, like let's say 25, okay, to make it spaced nicely. So what I want to show you is click on done. And maybe if you want to add an image, let's say you want to add an image to describe a little bit more about what you've written. So here, let's say we want to add maybe this one over here, insert file URL, and then you got your image and then click on done. And maybe you might want to add this thing. So a box module, we can drag this over here below that. And what this is useful is like, let's say if you have um, a blog post about how to clean a carpet and maybe there's like seven different ways and you might want to put maybe some tips or something like that. This is a really great way to do it. So for example, tips, maybe tip number one, like that. And then what we could do is change that to heading two. And then what we could do is maybe click on that and styling for the background. I might set it to yellow, drop the opacity down to 0.1 like that. And then I might add some spacing above that as well. So maybe let's try 35. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we could add obviously some content into there. So for example, just the written content, the actual tip. So let's just delete some of that, maybe like that. So I just wanted to show you how you can do it. Um, you probably see this on a lot of blogs. So I want to show you the basics. So that's pretty much it. So you can obviously add some more text and fill it up with different content. Here is your comment section that people can add in. And I'll show you how to change the post date. So this is probably one of the most common questions I get asked. So let's click on save and we can close it. So to change the post date display, we can go back to our dashboard click on Themify Ultra, Themify Settings, and then Default Layouts over here. So instead of the page layout, we want to navigate to Single Post. And then here, we want to adjust the post date. So instead of um, the round thing, we can change it to the inline text, or you can also hide it as well. So you can also hide certain things. So for example, you can hide the author as well, and then we can click on Save. So you can come here and sort of adjust it to how you want. Now, if you want to go to post over here, then you can see and manage all your posts. So to display your post, I'll show you guys how to do that. But in the meantime, I'm going to add in two more blog posts really quickly. So that's done. Let's navigate back to our homepage and turn on the builder. So we can scroll down over here and click on this and select one row. Then what we could do is we can drop in a post module. So you can create any page like a blog page and you can display the post module to display your blog post like that. So it's very simple. Um, what we could do is change the post layout to grid three and perhaps we can arrange it and limit it to three posts. And then we can also change the display layouts over here. So maybe I want to sort of hide the content and hide the post meta, which is this one over here. 
So let's try and change the display to none. So that's going to hide the text. And I also want to hide this. So scroll down to post meta and hide it. So you can play around with the different display settings over here as well. And I might just add some spacing on the top. So maybe 75 and let's try and do 75 on the bottom. Just like that. And then you're pretty much good to go. Let's just duplicate this gallery and let's drag it down here and paste it in. We're going to change the title to latest post. Latest post. So I might want to add a little bit of padding to space it out a little bit better. And the next section is I'll show you how to add in a map. So if you want people to find out, you know, where your business is, adding a map is also a really great option. So you can also drop in the map module over here. But the problem with that is that you'll need to get the API from Google and you do need to put in your credit card details, even though it's free, there's a quicker way of doing it. So we can go over to Google and we can just type in like Google maps, hit on enter, click in the first result. And then here, so maybe you can put in, you know, where your business is located. I might do, let's say Harlong Bay. So this is somewhere where I want to go. So I want to click into that and okay, that's all good. And we can click on share. So click on share over here and click on embed map and then copy HTML. So once you've copied that to your clipboard by clicking onto that, come back over here and we just need to paste it in to a text module. So click on text and we're going to, sorry about that. We do need to add in a new row, drop the text module into here. And we're going to, instead of pasting it into the visual tab, so you'll see visual, click in the text tab and paste in that HTML. So make sure you paste it into the text tab, otherwise you won't see it. So as you can see, the map is not sort of moving to the edges of the page. What we need to do is adjust the width. So over here, you can see the width is 600 pixels. So you can obviously adjust it to, let's say 1000 pixels if you want to. But if you want it to sort of take up the whole entire row, then we can change it to 100%. So what that means is it's going to be 100% the page width. And then we can hover over here on the top and for the row options, select full width. And that's pretty much it. So click on done. So you can also click on preview over here to see your map. And I think that is looking pretty good. So what I want to show you is how to add in a contact form. So contact form is going to allow anyone to contact you. So we can go back over here and disable that. So what you need to do is there's a link in the description below, and that is going to be the contact form plugin, which you'll do need to install. So what it's going to look like is it's going to look something like this. Once you've downloaded builder-contact.zip. Okay. So it's in the description below, make sure you download it and we're going to come back and save here and we're going to install the plugin. So close it, come back to dashboard, navigate to plugins, add new, and then click on upload plugin, choose file, and then navigate to the plugin. So over here and then click on open install now click on activate so that's activated so we need to go back to our website turn on the builder and what that is going to do is going to add an extra module here so as you can see the contact module and we can drag it and drop it in on our page so we can click on plus and click on maybe this one over here so then drag it in just like that so that's our contact form really really simple the only thing that you really want to make sure is make sure you send it to your email. So make sure you send it to your company email or your Gmail, uh, whatever it is. All right. And here I like to select this one over here where the placeholder is in the box. So it does save a lot of space and we can scroll down over here so you can play around with the different settings. Now we can scroll down to the send button. We can align it to the center like that, which I think it looks a lot nicer. Now, if you want to, let's say you want to add maybe something where people can upload a file or maybe they can select a time, you can add additional fields. So for example, we can click on add field and for the field name, we can do like upload. And then for the field type, we can select um, upload file. So over here, so people can upload that. So that's really, really good. 
You can also add in another upload if you do want to as well. That's completely fine. But if you want to do like something like time where people can select a time or if you want like different options. So we can go and do maybe time. And then here we can do checkbox. So it sort of displays in a checkbox. Let's do maybe 9 to 10 a.m. Like that. And then we can add another option. 10 to 11 a.m. Add another option. 11 to 12 p.m. So I guess you guys get the picture. And we can also click on it and you can drag it up as well. So you can move it up just like that. And that is looking great. So you can play around with the different sort of field types and create a custom form uh, where people can contact you or make a booking as well. So if you want to adjust sort of the look of it, then what we could do is click on styling and click on general, click on send button. And for the button, I might do, let's say the pink color or something like that. Or maybe I might do a neutral color. So let's do like a two, two, two. And then for the hover, I'm going to do a three, 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 or maybe a four, four, four. So a little bit lighter and then click on done. So let's go ahead and add maybe a background to that. So background, select an image, and then I'm going to click on this turtle over here. So I'm going a little bit faster because I think you guys sort of get the picture and just want to understand sort of the basics of how to do it. Um, and maybe just add some spacing on the top. So 75, drag it 75 on there as well. And then we could do, we do want to make this a little bit transparent. So it's going to look and blend in with our theme of our website. Uh, for the background image, I'm going to select maybe parallax. And then what we're going to do is click into the contact form, styling. And then here we're going to select the field uh, labels and we can change the color of that to white. And then I'm going to change sort of the field input fields, background, change the background to maybe transparent, something like that. So 0 0.1, which I think is good. And then for the input fields, I do want to change the font color to white as well. So when people type it in, that's the white font color. And then I also want to click on general font, change that to white as well. So make sure everything's white. So when people type it in, then everything's white. So maybe if you can see over here, no file chosen, we can also go to the row and then font and then arrange that to be white as well. And hopefully that's going to adjust. So click on done and save. And then we can close it. So let's scroll down to the bottom and that's looking pretty nice. So obviously you can add a contact uh, title over here and there is some spacing over here. So what we can do to fix it is to add negative margin. So turn on a builder and let's click into this module styling. So margin and let's try a negative margin. So try negative 20. Okay. That's not enough. Maybe negative 25, still not enough. 30. That's looking great. Done. And maybe I might zoom out. And then I'm going to move this and put it on top and just have the map on the bottom. And I think that's looking great. So that is looking really awesome. So what I want to show you now is how to ensure that when people click on your links, they actually scroll down to each of your different sections. And that is what we call the row anchors. So we just need to set in the locations. So if you haven't set in sort of the menu row anchors yet over on the top here, you want to go back into the description and make sure you go to the timestamps and create your menu. So when we click on the menu, you'll see that the URL has changed to hash about. Same thing if you go in gallery, it's hash gallery, and it's all lowercase, right? So what we need to do is set in the location of where we want people to scroll to. So we can click on turn on builder and we're going to hover over the row. So this is the row, the about me row. So we want to hover over here, click on here and then click on row options for the row anchor. We're going to label this as about. So that is the location. So as you can see on the right hand side here, it's hash about. So that's the location for about the next section. So hover over here, row options. And this one is going to be services. So make sure it's all the same as the link that you set in before. So without the hashtag in front, scroll down, 
the gallery section, row options, and this one's going to be gallery. Scroll down again, and this one is going to be the blog. So row options, blog, and the last one is going to be the contact section. So hover over here, row options, and then row anchor, contact. So that's pretty much all you need to do. So we can click on save and make sure you test it to see if it actually works. So click into about, gallery, services, the contacts, yep, all good. So if you do have any problems, it's mainly because you haven't set in the link correctly. For example, you didn't put in the lowercase or you've just messed up the sort of labels. So make sure to check that. So what I wanna show you guys now is to ensure that your website is fully mobile responsive on mobiles as well as tablets. So if you resize your screen and we scroll down, you can see that it resizes pretty nicely as well. And over here, it doesn't look very good, right? We've got the image over here, it's like nice and small, it's squashed with the text. Uh, but generally the theme does do a good job in making it responsive but sometimes we do need to edit it. So I do want to show you guys exactly how to do that. So let's go and turn on the builder and there are a few ways of doing it. So I want to show you all the ways of doing it. So over here, we can select mobile and what this is going to do, it's basically going to save the settings for mobile settings only. So if we hover over here, you can see this is what it looks like on mobile. So what we want to do is instead of having two columns, we sort of want to just have one. So hover over here and select one like that. Okay. So what you can also do is maybe add some padding as well. Uh, maybe I do want to have the text on top. So you can hover over here again, and then you can change right to left. And that's basically going to adjust it a little bit so that you have the text on top and then you got the image. So you can also always adjust that like that. And then let's say if you do want to keep it like that, that's fine. We can click into the text over here styling and then click on padding and then we can set in some padding on the top so maybe let's try 25 so that's going to save just for mobile devices only so if you go back to desktop then it's going to sort of readjust to what we have before so let's go back over here that's going to change so you need to readjust everything on your page that needs adjusting like that and you can also click into let's say this video module section or this entire row. So maybe on mobile you don't want the video for some reason or you just want to hide something. Then let's go over here and then we can click on the sort of three dots over here and click on visibility. So essentially what that is, it is if you want to hide certain things, certain rows or certain modules, we can hide it for the mobile or tablet or anything like that. So now that we've hidden it, then on mobile people won't be able to see the video this entire row. So as you can see, it's hidden. And you can definitely play around with the settings over here. Um, you can also navigate here um, by clicking on the eye icon over here as well, okay? So click on that and that should be done. Now the other way of doing it is also from your customizer section. So save the settings. And maybe I do wanna um, maybe make this one, the padding, just reduce it a tad for mobile. So maybe let's do 150. So let's pull it down here 150 and same for the bottom maybe make it 150 as well okay perfect done save and close so before we move on i do want to give you guys a quick tip so for example on the parallax scrolling for desktop what i generally recommend for the hero image like the first image on your website is maybe instead of parallax scrolling set it to full cover and then you can set the background to the fixed sort of background attachment. So it's a little bit more responsive on mobile when you set that in. And that's what I personally recommend. Now, if it's like the sort of like the middle images, like for example, the sort of the turtle image before, so let's just close it. And it still creates the parallax effect. And if we scroll down over here, the turtle over here, so that is still okay um, on mobile, but sometimes you may need it to be a little bit more responsive for mobile. So that's why I recommend the sort of fixed scrolling one. Click on customize on the top. So over here, we can also click on the styling here as well. So for mobile, we can click on that and we can adjust the sort of the size of, let's say maybe the body text or maybe the heading text specific for mobile as well. So let's say for example, we can go to body 
and body font and by default the body font I think is 16 so we can reduce it to let's say 14 then you can see here it's changed for mobile so before it was like 16 but we can adjust it to maybe 15 and that's only going to be specific for mobile so if you click back onto the desktop it's going to readjust as well so sometimes you may need to readjust um, the body font as well as the headings specific for mobile by clicking on here so I do want to show you guys how to edit some stuff as well um, your customizer section so for example when I mentioned uh, when we were creating the hero text over here you can click on headings and you can edit the heading one uh, sort of headings universally for your entire website as well so you can do that over here and that's what I personally recommend because that way you don't have to always set it you know to the specific font all the time you've got the standard font so for example this is the heading 2 we can go to heading 2 and then we can do make sure we set in Montserrat or maybe you want to change it different font or anything like that and then we could do for the font weight we could be bold something like that and then we could do letter spacing maybe one and then that might look okay then you can also adjust the color um, and everything like that click on publish and then we can scroll down uh, the only other things that I want to show you guys before we create our logo is maybe we can go to the blog so let's say for example click into the blog so over here we've got the form so to edit the styling you can edit it here right this is the sort of the widget sidebar area you can also edit the sidebar you can edit any section of your website as well so for example uh, when we're scrolling down the sticky header you can't see the text so you can also go to sticky header and then we could do the sticky header link change it to maybe 222 so hopefully that is going to display right so we can adjust everything that we need sticky header and everything like that so what I want to show you now is how to create your logo for free as well as your fab icon Okay, so to create a logo, what I recommend is going to canva.com. So Canva is really, really awesome. I highly recommend it for any type of design work. So we're going to create a logo. So on the right over here, click on create a design. So you probably need to log in first with your Google account or Facebook. Click on custom dimensions. So the dimensions that I recommend is 512. And then for the height is 128. Create design. So we're going to be creating a logo that fits into here. So it needs to sort of be like a horizontal logo rather than sort of like a square one. So for example, Apple, it fits into their sort of navigation area. Same with Tesla and same with Nike. So we're not going to be creating like a square one, um, but you can adjust it later on if you do want to use it for sort of other uh, marketing materials and things like that as well. So what we're going to do is first of all, add some text. So click on text on the left. So over here, you can choose a text that you like that suits your brand. So previously I talked about like the sans serif and also the serif typeface. So think about which one you want to pick. So I just want to create a modern design. So I might pick this one over here. So it's a sans serif, drag it in and just drop it. And then I might just delete the bottom like that and then just keep that. So here we're going to type in like a title. So I'm going to call it parallax, oops, something like that. And then what you can do is just drag it into position and then we can resize it just by dragging and just pulling it over like that. So we're gonna make sure that it fits in there. And you can also change the color as well as edit the font over here. The next thing that you wanna do is add in maybe like a little icon for your brand. So you can click on elements over here and you can search for different elements. So if we search for, let's say the infinity logo, so there'll be plenty of different logos that you can choose. So for example, let's pick maybe this one over here. Okay. So as you can see, when you hover over it, it has sort of like a icon that says pro and that is for pro account only. So what I do recommend is signing up for the free trial. I think it's like a 30 day free trial and you get to download all the pro sort of elements and everything that you need for, you know, your logo and anything that your business needs as well. So I think that's good enough. And maybe perhaps I think that's good. So you can also change the color. Now, what I do recommend is first of all, we're gonna download that. So click on download. And what I recommend is downloading it as a PNG transparent file. 
So basically the background, there is no background. So we're gonna click on that. And I do think you might need to sign up for the pro account for that. So make sure to do that and then click on download. What I do recommend is creating a black version or a colored version. And then you also want a version which is white as well. Because sometimes when we have a background, we need to use the white version of the logo. So change your text and change your icon to white and then download it again as a PNG. So you can also create a colored one as well in case you might need it later on. So we're gonna go back onto our website over here and we're gonna add in our logo. So click on customize and then you wanna to navigate to site logo and tagline. Click into that and click on site logo and then click on logo image and then click on plus and we want to upload files, select files. So we can upload the new logos that you just created and they should be a PNG file. And here I'm going to select maybe the white version of it and click on insert image and here it is. So what we need to do is we're gonna set in, I think this is the width of it to 128 and then that is good. Okay, so that's gonna scale down proportionally. Normally I only sort of edit one of these boxes over here and 128 is perfect for the size that we just um, added in. So sometimes you might need to sort of play around with the different settings, like might change it to like 48. Um, you can use, so normally I just, you know, uh, resize one of them. Like for example, maybe try 38. I think that's, that's okay as well. So we can also click on the site logo margin, click on that and deselect that. And sometimes you might need to add some margin on the top of that logo or maybe minimize it like that. So it really depends. So you might do maybe three. Let's see and how that looks. Maybe let's try edit that a little bit, maybe 10. So you might need to adjust it. So what I'm gonna do is I might just change it to let's say 32. Let's have a look at this. So we're gonna adjust it. I think that does look okay at the moment. So then we can click on publish. So with the sticky header, as you can see, the links are dark gray, which we've changed before. So sometimes we need to edit that. So let's go back to the sticky header. And for the sticky header wrap, I might just change it to like a, a white version. And now we can't really see the logo, right? So what we need to do is edit the sticky header logo to the black version of our logo, select it. And then here, we're gonna change it to 30 two and hopefully that's going to change we just need to publish it and probably close it for that to sort of update for us right so now that is set in really really nicely so sometimes you do need to play around with it um, but if you followed the tutorial then it should be okay so everything looks okay at the moment and we might want to change the font as well because I think it's sort of like the default font I thought I changed it to Montserrat but I don't think it's edited, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it. Click on the body over here. And then for the body font, let's change it to Montserrat over here and select it. And that should be all good. We might need to change the font weight to uh, normal. And I think that is looking great. So let's change maybe the font size to 15. So a little bit smaller. I think it looks quite nice like that. And then for the body link over here, so this is red right now. So we're gonna click on body link and we're gonna change it to the pink color. So basically it is very, very consistent with our design over here. Same thing for the body link hover. So generally what I wanna do is probably get the correct color code from before. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna sort of freehand it. So I'm gonna click on it and then we're gonna make it a little bit maybe darker. So drag it down a little bit and then when we hover over it, so it's a little bit darker, but it is consistent. So it's not like some random color where you pick like a blue, it hovers like that, that's not good. You wanna pick a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. So I think that's okay. And then click on publish, and then we can close it. The next step is to add a fav icon. So we do need to create that again. So let's go over here. And what I wanna do is maybe create a new file. So file, and then we're gonna create a new design set a custom dimension 64 by 64 create new design and then let's search for the elements as you can see there's a lot of different templates which you can use as well but let's click on elements over here and infinity again 
So let's drag in that same one, drag that in, and then we're going to make sure that is nice and large so that it shows up properly. So something like that. All right. So obviously you can try and make it a little bit better. So you can also add a background to it. So maybe if you want it to edit and change the background, then it's going to look something like this, but I sort of just want it to be like that. So we're going to just undo that. And then we're going to download it, save it transparent and download. So we're going to go back over here, navigate to your dashboard, navigate to Themify Ultra, Themify settings, and then click on fab icon, upload, choose the fab icon, open. And then sometimes if you can't click on upload, it doesn't open up. What you need to do is click on media and upload it there and then copy the URL and paste it into here and then click on save. And then you should be pretty much good to go. So let's go and refresh that page. And there you go. So you got your fab icon, you got your logo, everything looks great. And if anything does not look good, then you can go ahead and customize and edit all the different sections. So what I want to show you now is how to ensure that your website shows secure. So right now it says not secure and that's not good for search engine purposes. And sometimes when people land on your website, it doesn't look very trustworthy when you've got not secure. So I'll show you how to secure it with a lock icon. So what you need to do is log into your SiteGround account and I'll also show you guys how to do it if you're not using SiteGround as well. So click on websites and then here you can click on site tools. I think you can also click on add SSL over here as well. So click on that. And here we can scroll down and basically we have selected the Let's Encrypt SSL. So scroll down over here and then we can select the domain name uh, over here, normally you'll only have one and then you can click on activate. And then that's going to take you to the sort of site tools area anyway. So we're going to go and click on SSL manager and select your domain, select let's encrypt and click on get. Okay. So once that is finished installation, then we can go back over here, click on the dashboard and then we can go to plugins and we're going to download a new plugin. So it's called really simple SSL. So really simple SSL and hit on enter and then install now and then click on activate. So you should get this message over here so we can go ahead and activate SSL. Now, generally, if you're using another host, it should show the same message as well. Now, if you don't see this message over here, it says like it's error um, that you don't have an SSL certificate installed on your domain. Then what you need to do is contact your web host and they should be able to install a Let's Encrypt on your domain for free. So generally it should work. Then we're going to click on go ahead and activate SSL. And then once that is done, then we might need to log back in. So let's try and visit our website and then, okay, so we don't need to log in. All right. So if you do, then log in, we're going to turn on the builder because it says not secure over here. So what we want to do, is we want to click on save and then we want to close it. All right. So that ensures like all the images that we uploaded before sort of um, has gone into HTTPS. So for example, if we sort of move that in there, we can click on styling background. So the sort of image URLs have changed. So that's what the plugin does. Click on save and then we can click on close and then you're pretty much done. Okay, so before we finish off the tutorial, I do want to show you a couple more things. For example, how to add in a new page and use the layouts as well as updating your theme. So to add a new page, we can hover over here on the top and then click on page. And then we can add in a new title. So for example, I'm just going to name it service one and then click on publish, publish again, click on the title again, click on the link, and then we can turn on the builder. And then over here next to the modules, we can click on blocks and then we can scroll down and we can use one of these blocks to sort of speed up the process of creating our website. So for example, we like this over here, we can click it and drag it and just drop it into our row. Okay. So the reason why I didn't show you guys this earlier is because if you didn't know how to use the builder, then you're going to find a hard time sort of using the templates because you don't know how to arrange things and don't know how to design it and things like that. So now that you do, then this is going to be really easy. So we can click into it and then we can change it just like that. So really, really simple. And you can hover over here and then click on styling to change your image and things like that. 
So we can click on done. So they've got some nice sort of templates as well, uh, blocks. So for example, the FAQ sections, which you can use and change the text. And then let's say we've done it. We can, let's just click on delete for this. All right. And then we can add in a layout. So you can hover over here, layouts, load layout. And this is sort of like a whole page layout, which you can import onto your page. So let's say, for example, this really, really cool one here, we can click into it and replace layout. And we can go into here and we can change the text and change the images, right? So this is not very, very practical, um, but it is really, really cool. And you can take inspiration from it. So we could also go back to layouts over here. And if you create your own layout, you can also save as layout. So you can create a new page and then sort of load layout and use your own layout. Same thing with the blocks. So for each sort of uh, row, we can save it as a row. And then when we create a new page, we can use that same row. So this is really going to speed up your process if you're designing websites for your clients or maybe for yourself as well, if you've got like a lot of service pages and things like that. So we can click on save over here and we can close it. And as you can see, the page might appear on the top. Now, if it doesn't appear, then what you can do is we can go over here to menus. And this is the back end page where you can edit your menu structure as well. So make sure you select your menu. So sometimes if you've got two menus, you might need to select it from the drop down. And here we can click on the pages and we can add it to our menu. So because we've selected auto add pages, then it automatically will add new pages once you create it. So you can create like a drop down or anything like that. You can also click on contact on the drop down here. You can also highlight that link. So if we save the menu, then we can go back over here and you can see that is sort of highlighted. So that's really, really nice. And then what I want to show you is we can also use uh, animations. So for example, click into that module, click on here animation and do entrance animation. So for example, we can set it to fade in like that. And then we can do the second one, another animation to fade in as well. So normally you want to keep this very, very simple. Um, you don't want to over animate your website. So we're going to set a delay, one second delay, click on done. Second one over here, animation, set this one to fade in as well. And for the delay, it's going to be 1.5 seconds. So you've also got all these different types of modules, which you can use as well, but don't go crazy because adding too many animations is going to make your website slower. And if you don't do it sort of nicely, it's going to look a little bit spammy. So I don't really recommend it too much. Um, we can click on save and then we can close it. And that's going to look really, really nice. So another thing I do want to show you guys, um, maybe we can go over here and turn on the builder. I think this is a really great way to keep your website consistent. And that is to use the copy styling function. So for example, if you want to copy this button over here, we can click on the copy. Okay. Now, if you have, let's say you're creating a new button on another page or anything like that, when we drop in a new button, let's say, for example, drop that in and pretend this is a new page and then we put that in, right? So we can obviously reconfigure it, um, but that's probably the slow way. We can click on done. We can hover over here, hover over the three dots and paste the styling. And that's gonna sort of keep that same styling. And then all you need to do is change the text and also the, the link, all right? So that everything's gonna look super consistent with your website design. If you do get an update notice in your dashboard area of your WordPress, then what you can do is go to my website. So hoganshua.com forward slash update. And then you can download the Themeify Ultra theme if you're following this video. And then you can download it onto your computer. And what you can do is go back to your dashboard and we can go to appearance themes. And what we need to do is activate a new theme. So for example, this one over here, any theme. So just click on activate. And what we need to do is to delete the old theme over here and we can click on delete. Okay. So now your website is going to lose uh, sort of everything, the content and everything, but we can restyle it back. So let's go back to our dashboard and then we're going to re upload the new theme that you downloaded from the update link. Okay. Let's go back over here, add new upload theme, choose file, and then just upload the theme that you just downloaded, click on open, install. And you can also go back over here. Now, if you do want to back up your website, 
you can watch this video over here, but normally all the settings will remain and the site will be back after we activate the theme that we um, are installing right now. And then click on activate and then we can go back to our website and everything should be all good. Now you can also get automatic updates as well as support as well. So if you visit the link over here, you can get access to the Themeify membership where you can get a license key and that way you can automatically update without sort of deleting the theme and reinstalling it again. And you also get access to the support forum. So if you have any questions and you have any issues, then you can ask the support forum and basically they can help you out. So this is really, really useful if you're creating websites for clients or you are serious about creating a website. And you can also use the discount code HOGAN and that's gonna save you 30% off. Okay, so if you have any issues or any problems, make sure you drop it in the comment section down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Then we can go back over here on our website and that is pretty much it for our website. So the last thing that we can do is we can log out of our page. So we can click on log out and then we can visit our homepage. And this is the website that we created. And thank you guys so much for following the tutorial. I really, really appreciate it. And if you did find some value in this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And if you have any questions, drop it in the comment section below. I'll also have an FAQ link in the description as well uh, with the most commonly asked questions. So thank you guys so much. See you guys in the next video.